You're ready to go? Page three. So the first thing I need to introduce you to is what you've been learning since junior high. The measures of central tendency. Okay? And it's basically the mean, the median, and the mode. Do you remember those? Mean is average, same thing. Uh, measure of central tendency is a number around which the data clusters. Okay? A number around which data clusters. So it kind of tends to happen mostly around that number. In mathematics, there are several different measures of central tendency. The most common is the arithmetic mean, usually called the average in everyday language. The arithmetic mean is denoted, this is the symbol for it, x bar. If you take, a, take this in college, it's x bar. That's mean. That's the average. It is found by adding all the values and then dividing that sum by the number of values in the set. Here is the formula for your average. But this is the big part here. Do we need to close the blinds or are we good? Is it it's good? It's not blinding you? No? Okay. Include units, please, and round to two decimals. So sometimes I'll ask you, like, the average number of hot dogs being sold for this stand, you're going to be tempted to say, well, it can't be a decimal, I'll round it to a whole number. Not, not here, because average helps us measure. So, for example, if one store sells 7.72 .7 hot dogs and the other stand next to it sells 7.9 hot dogs, technically the one with 7.9 sells more hot dogs on average. Um, so here we go. I'm going to give you a, a nice visual here. Patrick earned the following amounts over a six-month period, January to June. So there it is. Calculate his average monthly income. Let's do this. All I need you to show me is this. The number that you get when you add them all up. So you grab your calculator. Please show this step because if you don't and you get the number wrong, you get nothing. Right? But if you show me that you're adding it up or give me the indication, this is 10,900 dollars in this case. So if you add everything up, you get that. How many values do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So when you go 10,900 divided by 6, you're saying that on average, you're making this much money. In grade 11, you did a budget unit. Remember the budget unit? Budgeting? When you, when, especially when you're younger, you're not, maybe not going to have the same paycheck every month, right? You're going to make... Lots one month and then not as much the other, so it's going to be all over the place like this. But this is your average, so you can kind of, when you make your budget, you're like, I'm expecting about 1800 bucks a month. So I'm going to base my spending on what is kind of like the middle line here. Okay, so this is per month, by the way. I like you to know this, okay? This is dollars, and you're dividing it by six months. Right? So dollars and months kind of follow you. So you're making 1816 per month. That's what you just found. Another thing I need you to know is the outlier. An outlier or outliers. Values that are significantly different than the general trend. Remember, they lie outside the set. Okay? Outliers, I'm going to use that a lot. I need you to know what that means. Okay. Here's the graph. Just follow me here with a pencil. I'm going to make my bars two squares wide. Okay. So for January, we made fifteen hundred bucks. Fifteen hundred bucks is between a thousand and two thousand. So I'm just going to say the bar is going to be this wide, and it's going to go up to fifteen hundred, right about there. So you make your bar there. 
that's January, 1500 bucks. And then uh, 2300 for February. So I'm gonna also make it two bars wide. 2300 is right about there. March, 2200, so it should be a little shorter than than the one before. April, 800, what happened there? Maybe you uh, didn't get as many shifts. Weekends, or maybe COVID happened kind of inspired by COVID, right? Remember March? Do you remember March before spring break? It's only going to be two weeks. I don't know if you remember that. One week of spring break, right? So they're like, let's just add a week to it, and we'll be back after two weeks. And uh, yeah, that never happened. Um, so next, May is 2000. So I'm going to go to 2000 here. And just kind of line that up if you can. And June is 2100. It's just a little taller than the previous one. Just try your best. It doesn't have to be exactly. But what is the average here? The average is 1816, right? Eighteen sixteen. That is right about here. Eighteen sixteen is right about there. So what you're finding is the average line here. This is the the average, which is eighteen sixteen sixty seven. So a visual representation of you know what you can expect. So you can obviously tell that some months you make less. Some months you make more, right? So it's all over the place. Uh, and so the, the average is kind of what you could expect on a regular basis. Okay. That's the average right there. What is, which one would be your outlier in this case? Which one do you think is very different than the general trend? 800? Yeah. $800 in April. Uh, may have been sick, right? Maybe due to illness, layoffs, etc. That is usually uh, sometimes the province asks, like, justify why the outlier is there. So, temperature, right? It was a really cold day, or this case 800 because something may have happened just give it use your imagination there we're good should be writing some of this down next page median and mode are the other two mmm -M -M. think of it that way mean median and mode those are your MCTs. Page four, median and mode are two different measures of central tendency. What is the median? Median is the middle value in a data set. And it's, it's important to have your data in ascending or descending order, which means arranged. If there's an even number of values, the median is the average of the mean. Okay, highlight this with a different color. If there is an even number of values, the median is the average or mean of the two middle values. Say what? I'll just show you uh, plain and simple here. First, a range, always. I'm going to ask you to do that every single time, a range. Otherwise, you will most likely get this wrong. Two cases. 
If there's an odd number of values, pick the middle value. You must have an equal amount on either side. That's how you know you got it right. In this case, it's an odd number of values. Five values here, that's odd. Therefore, this is your middle value, that's it. That's your median. How do you know, Mr. Dirksen, how do you know for sure? Count, there's two less than six and two values that are greater than six. Now you know for sure it's the median, okay? So median, is six units, get used to stating it like that. Uh, two values are below and two values, values above, okay? That's the definition of median. Half are above, half are below. So the median is actually a number from your data set when it's odd. Okay. Here's another one. Even. This is another case. So we had odd, and now we're going to have even. You have to calculate the mean of the two middle values. Okay. I will say this. N is equal to six values. That is even. Okay. So here's the trick. You, you have to grab these two. The median is found the following way. 6 plus 10. You add that up and you're going to divide it by dos, right? Why two, Mr. Dirksen? You're adding up two values. So the average is always how many numbers are you adding? That's what you divide by. So that's 16 divided by 2, that's 8 units. Eight units. That is your median. Is the median question? Is the median actually a number in the in the data set? No. But it is still used to find the midpoint where half are below, half are above. Here is the trick. Uh, should I show you the trick now or a bit later? I'll do it. I'll do it later once you figure it out with smaller data sets. So I want you to is this? I want you to determine the median for each of the following data sets. Check if it's arranged. So you always have to ask: Is my data arranged? And then you proceed to figuring out which one the middle is. So go for it. Shouldn't take you that long. I'm going to do A. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right? N is equal to 7 values. That is odd. Okay. So you just pick the middle value. Like, if you're not sure, just go 6. There's three below and three above. It's definitely our median. Okay. Here's the trick to know for sure. Uh, you just go seven values divided by two. What is that? 3.5, correct? So it will be the fourth value. So count first, second, third, fourth, right? This is the fourth value. That is your median. Okay. That's the trick here. I'll say trick. And why would you need to know the trick? Because let's say you have like 49 values or something big, like 101, something that's odd. You just take the number of values, divide it in half. You'll always get something with 0.5. And then you just round up to the next whole number. So you want to go find the fourth value. I'm going to highlight that. The fourth value is this, 
the value in this slot, which happens to be 6. And notice that there are negatives there too. That's fine. <clears throat> Next. This one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 values. Right? N is equal to 8 values. Oh, wait. Why is it N? You might wonder, like, why are you using N? N in statistics is like... The, what we call like how many values are you adding okay so n is just the number of values so eight values that's even watch this the trick is a little different here let's find it first and then i'll show you the trick you probably realize that it has to be some something in here because you have three above and three values below so that's a good sign so the median is going to be Two values added divided by two, for sure. What are these two values? We know it's six and 10. So that's 16 divided by two, which is eight units. Isn't this the same as before? Yeah, anyways, here's the trick. You ready for this? You take eight, eight values, and you divide it by two. It's always divided by two. So that will give you the four, that'll be four. So what this means is that you're gonna have to add the fourth, right, to get median, you're gonna have to add the fourth and the one right next to it, which is fifth divided by two, okay? So you first, you take the number of values divided in half, then you're saying, okay, it's this one and the one right next to it. So this is the fourth value, and this is the fifth. Okay, so that's how, and I'll do this quite often, and you'll get the hang of it down the, like down the road, and, but that's how you do it. So if this had been 10 values, you know if it's even that it can't just be one number. It will have to be two, the, the average between the two. And so that's when you, you know you have to add up two numbers. So this is just to help you narrow it down. Let's keep going. And then you'll do the MCTs uh, of a bunch of data sets. That's going to be where we're going to park a little bit. Page five. The mode. Okay, what is the mode? The number that occurs most often in a list that is the mode make sure you understand this because the definition is important here so in a shoe store right the store may want to know the mode of the sizes right what is the one that's sold most often right? so you can put it into a context there you can have either no mode one mode or a number of modes. And here's where I'm going to give you a visual. Okay. So no mode is if each number appears the same number of times. So if you have 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, let's say. Okay. The mode is none. Okay. The common error here is students saying that the mode is zero? That is not correct, because then you're telling me that zero is the number that occurs most often in a data set. That's not correct. Does it say NA or none? Okay, one mode, if only one number occurs most often. So I'm just gonna do this. So this is arranged, obviously. So what if you have something like this? Two, two, three, three, but then you've got three sevens all of a sudden. So your mode here is seven units. It's actually this one right here. That's the number that occurs most often. So your mode is seven there. This could be minutes. This could be anything, okay? <clears throat> so we don't know, we'll get units down the road. Number of modes, if two or more mode numbers occur the same number of times. So here we go. If you have two, 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 
three three four four five 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 and you're like wait a minute oh yeah there's one mode right here and another mode right here okay so in this case the mode would be two comma five units so you've got multiple modes in that case I'll just make a note, arrange data for median and mode. Okay, that's very important. Arrange your data for median and mode, uh, and then you'll be okay. Let's go to page six here. And I know, I know some of you are like, I've done this in junior high. Just, just leave me alone, right? Just hang in there. I'm, we're building, so I just need to make sure you know. And quite often, a mark is just finding the mean. Of, of data set that's like one mark on the exam so if you know what you're doing it should be a slam dunk right watch this calculate the mean median and mode for the following sets identify any outliers if applicable what do we call mean median mode collectively it's open book i just told you at the beginning it's they're called the measures of central tendency yes uh, it could be called mcts for short but all of these their goal is to try to find the middle of the data set like what's going to happen most often so let's assume we've got hours worked each day okay this is what the numbers represent so let's arrange it i will basically give you marks even for arranging it. The province doesn't, but I do it to encourage you to do that. So let's arrange this. This is how I do it, and I would recommend you do the same. You grab the lowest number, zero, cross it off, comma. The next one is three, cross it off, write it down. The next one is six, then it's seven, then it's eight, and it's 12 and 19. And you check. You had two, four, six, seven values. Two, four, six, seven. I have seven remaining. So now you know you didn't miss one. Okay, because sometimes I give you 14 or 20. So you got to watch out. Now that it's arranged, let's find our mean. And so you basically add up all of them. And you're going to divide it by seven when you're done. Okay. Do I need to go zero, Mr. Dirksen? No, you don't. That's 55. If you go 55 divided by seven, that's 7.86 hours on average that you're working. But Mr. Dirksen, there's a zero there. There's a three there. Yes. The average is kind of that, that red line, and then sometimes you work more, sometimes you work less. But that's kind of what you can count on in the long run, on a daily basis. Then you work 19 hours sometimes, right? What's your median? On your study sheet, right? You should have median. Uh, this one is odd, correct? Because we have seven values. Let's make a note here. Seven values. That is odd, right? Make a note of that. So I'm gonna do the work down here. Seven divided by two is 3.5. So that means that I'm gonna have to go pick the fourth value. The fourth value, so just count. One, two, three, four, it's seven, right? Seven hours is my median.
fun stuff here on a Monday. What does the median represent? What does it tell us? Because I will ask you, the middle, yeah. But let's be a bit more specific. Here's This is the key here, and the province has done this many times. Half of the time you work less than seven hours and half of the time more than seven hours. <laughs> You're like, what? You have to say, you have to write like a paragraph to explain what the median is. That is what the median is though by definition, right? It marks the, the, the line where half of the values are below it, half of them are above it. In fact, you will often hear in the news when they talk about wages and salaries, they'll say the median salary for Winnipeg is like $50,000. You should know, okay, that means that half of the time people make less and half more. Yes, sir. Half of the time you work? Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Half of the time you work less than seven hours? and half of the time, more than seven hours. Chicken scratch, right? Yeah. Guilty of that. Mode. Is there a mode? Not, none, right? Every number is unique, only shows up once. So write down none. Don't write down zero, because then you're telling me zero is the most often, uh, the mo most popular number. I'm gonna leave it there for now. You try B and C and see how that goes. Uh, and if you're done this, uh, keep going, the next page has more for you. And I will, uh, I will hover around a little bit to help you out. Yeah, this page seven is next level. There's more values there. But don't I, I don't If you could just look up here, um, I appreciate if you do your work, I can always find out like what's going what's going wrong, right? Or what's going right. It's either way. So I'm gonna do this. This is my last go today, and then I will let you do some larger samples on the other side. So for for B, I arrange it. Make sure you count, right? Two, four, six, eight. I'm counting. There's eight still from the beginning. So we're good. Median. It's even, right? So you almost have to tell yourself, hey, this is an even scenario. I'm going to have to add two numbers. I can guarantee you, you're going to have to add two numbers and divide it by two. Guarantee. The question is, what are the two numbers that go in here? And this is where you do the trick, right? Uh, eight values. I divide it in half, so it'll be the fourth. That's what you start with. You take the fourth and the one that's right next to it, the fifth value. You add those two up, divide it by two. So what are the fourth and the fifth? This is the fourth, and that's the fifth, right? If you count from the beginning, it has to be arranged. 
and you might have been surprised to get 129, maybe not, right? But if you add those up, you get uh, 129. You get 129 because the values are the same. If you recognize that, you know that that is your median, okay? Next, mode is just 112 centimeters because that's the one that shows up three times. If there's only one mode, not more than one, okay? If you had another number that appeared three times, now you have two modes, right? But if you have the one that shows up most often, there's only one. Let's keep going. Negative numbers, it has happened. So negative seven is the lowest. And you've got negative four, negative two, negative two, three, three, five, seven, twelve. Remember, very cold is on the lower end. And then it gets warmer, 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 and then you're in the positives, right? So what's my mean? Here's where I'm going to show you my calculator. I don't know about yours, but I can go negative 7 minus 4 minus 2 minus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 12. I can actually type in the sign as I go. And then you get 15. That's what you're supposed to get. And we have how many values? Two, four, six, eight, nine values here. It could have been a negative answer, by the way. So don't let that throw you off. You're listening, right? This could have been a negative 15. If you have lots of negatives, it can happen. So divide it by, ne by nine, that's 1.67 degrees Celsius. Okay. My median, this is odd. So I'm going to do the work on the side here somewhere. I don't like to, I'm just going to take 9 divided by 2. That's 4.5. So it is just the fifth number. The fifth number. So I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It is 3 degrees Celsius. That's it. Half of the time it's colder than 3. Half of the time it's warmer than 3. And last but not least, my mode. My mode would be negative 2 degrees Celsius and 3 degrees Celsius. Those are the two. Uh, they actually share the podium, so to speak. Negative 2, negative 3. So the median, you just got to watch out. Sometimes you have to add two numbers divided by 2. Sometimes you just have to go grab it uh, if, it's, if it's odd. Okay, is there anything else I need to say? Oh yeah, do we have outliers? Let's talk about outliers. For B, is there an outlier when you look at it? 112, 129, all of a sudden, boom, 193. It could be 193 centimeters. What's the outlier for set C? I think 12 would be an outlier there. Question, why, why did I, I wanna make sure you understand, why did I say 12 degrees Celsius is an outlier? Because you know the general trend, negative seven to negative four, that's a three degree difference, right? So it's, it's slowly getting warmer, all of a sudden you get go from seven to 12, that is like a five degree jump. Uh, that would probably be considered an outlier. And you're like, why probably? Usually it will be very, very clear. An outlier will be like super far out, like 25 degrees Celsius, for example, would be an outlier for sure. Okay, I need you to work through quest question seven, seven all the way to nine for the rest of today. And, and for tomorrow, I would like you to have that uh, figured out. Notice how many values there are. Okay, there are lots of values. So that's, that's something to be expected. I will post the key. I think it's already up. But 7 to 9, try to do as much as you can before you go today.